It's my pleasure to introduce now Mayor Sylvester Turner. Let me say thank you for a very gracious introduction. <clears throat> My voice is a little bit strained. We just had a city council meeting this morning. <laughs> but I, so I needed to get outdoors anyway. <laughs> you know, so um, I want to personally thank you, Margaret. It was, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't get here be before you started, uh, but I did get here enough to get a lot of the meat of your presentation, so thank you for your comments today. Uh, and I want to thank you personally uh, for coming to the city of Houston. How many are from outside of the city of Houston? Let me get a show of hands. Oh, good. You, you've not heard this speech before. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank uh, Sterling. Um, thank you for this opportunity to address you um, at the Texas Trail and Active Transportation Conference. Uh, since I've been in office, transportation has been one of the key things uh, that I've talked about and uh, have gone before the Texas Tech Stock, uh, the commissioners, and talked to them about changing the paradigm. Uh, some of you may be familiar with that, because right now we provide funding uh, directed to the 97% of people in our single occupancy vehicles, uh, and we've done an excellent job at that. This is Texas, we'll always have to build roadway capacity, um, and we've done an excellent job at it, um, but congestion still builds up, and this is one of the high regions where there's a lot of congestion. Um, and we have put a lot of resources. For those who are familiar with I-10 West, I use that as an example. We now have the uh, widest highway uh, in the world, 26 lanes, including the feeder roads. Um, we finished that in 2006, at, at 2007, I believe. Uh, at a cost of about $2.5 billion. Um, and some seven, eight years later, it is now the eighth most congested area in the state. Um, so that is an example that we need to be looking at changing the paradigm uh, in the state of Texas in, in so many ways. Uh, but I want to congratulate the producers, Mike Bike Texas and the Texas Trails Network on the important work they have done to advocate for safe biking and outdoor recreation in Texas. I also want to thank the conference sponsors, including Bike Houston. Uh, Bike Houston has been a strong advocate. Um, yeah. <laughs> strong advocate for safe biking in Houston and, and has been our partner on the Houston Bike Plan. Um, and I want to offer my thoughts on how important walking and biking is to the city of Houston. Um, and all of you know it, so I'm really kind of just saying something you already know. It's important for our mobility solutions in a densifying city, and this happens to be one. Every time we can do something other than get a, in a car, that is a plus. Uh, and if we're walking and biking, fewer cars and trucks on our road. Uh, second, it's important for our health. As Margaret was indicating, in 2010, 34% of Houston's children uh, over the age of 11, or either overweight or obese. And 77% of children between the ages of 16, uh, 6 to 17 in Harris County are not getting the physical activity that they need. And so we have to, to design a much more active city, uh, not just for our kids today, but for our future. Third, it's important for our safety. Uh, just between 2010 and 2014, we had 25 bike-related fatalities in the city of Houston. Uh, it is unfortunate, it is unacceptable, and so we need to do something better. Fourth, for quality of life, and I think that speaks for itself. Uh, and we have the Tour de Houston uh, here on March 19th and 20th. Uh, I've got my bicycle, got my helmet. Um, Senator Ryan Ellis, you will be hearing from him tomorrow. I don't wear the type of shorts that he wears. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, you're just not going to take a picture of me and put that out on, on and tweet that out. Uh, but you're either riding the 20 miles or 45 or 75 miles, and I'm looking forward to that. And for those who are not in the city, please come and join 5,000 of my closest <coughs> friends um, for a tour to Houston. And then finally, it's important for the economy. 
uh, because millennials and corporations are looking for great places to live and work, and we need to provide that. I will add, you may, some may wonder, why would you put a, have this conference in Houston and in Texas? Uh, it might seem counterintuitive, uh, because we have a fixation for our cars, or our trucks. Um, and if you just look at the commute time from home to our workplace, uh, only 0.5% of us bike to our work. Uh, that's lower than the national average. 2.2% of us walk, 74% uh, drive solo, 13.5% are carpooling, and 4.8% are using the transit. Uh, so why Houston, Texas? I think one of the reasons is that uh, we are trying to demonstrate leadership and trying to indicate that we need to change the way we are doing things. And so we've come up with some comprehensive plan. The plan Houston is more of a plan people coming up with the mayor and city council, people responding to it, and I give a lot of credit to the previous mayor, Mayor Anise Parker. Um, we are talking about Houston complete streets and transportation, which is critically important. And then we just recently announced Houston's bike plan which is an exciting uh, plan. It is aggressive, ambitious, but I believe it's very realistic. Um, and it shows that Houston is moving in the, in the right direction. Uh, this would connect over 75% of Houston's people to, uh, people to jobs within one half mile of a high comfort bike facility. It's going from 260 bike miles to over 800 in the city of Houston. And the goal is to do this within 10 years at a cost of about 90 to $155 million, and we will get it done. Um, it is amazing what you can do uh, when you put your mind to it. Uh, but in this city, the attitude is if you can dream it, then you can do it. And Houston has always been a can-do city. Uh, but you have to have high goals and set high expectations and you move in that direction. And we intend to do it. And then lastly, the Bayou 20, Greenway 2020 project is, is moving forward. And we will transform more than 3,000 acres along the bayous into publicly accessible green space and connect 150 miles of hike and bike trails. The goal is to be completed by 2020. The total cost of that project is about 220 million. And we have already passed a bond proposal in 2012 that would provide 100 million of that, and with the uh, private sector and philanthropists, that will add another 120. And then I want to focus on the Houston B cycle, uh, which is another example of great partnerships with the city. Uh, Houston B cycle currently has 31 stations. Last year, there were almost 100,000 checkouts of the Houston B cycle. And I'm excited to announce to you that Houston's uh, bike share, working in partnership with the city, was successful at securing grant funding to vastly expand the B-Cycle system in Houston. In the next three years, the Houston B-Cycle will expand their network to over 100 stations, more than triple today's network, um, which means that we are moving in the right direction. We are not where we want to be in the city of Houston, we are not where we need to be. But the reality in, in this city, we are not standing still. We are moving forward. And when you come and visit us again, uh, I believe you will see a greener city. You will see a more kinetic city. You will see a city that values the quality of life and a city that has taken the position. We don't want to be second or third to anyone. We want to be first. And so when it comes to bikes on your mark, get set, and let's go. <laughs>